Okay, hey Jane, what's going on? Hi everybody. It's weird. We've got a weird uh, situation here where there's hardly anybody here where there's normally lots of people. Well, maybe it will have people start adding or I coming know, in yeah. during. Hi Brian. Let's... Hi Marcel. Uh, welcome. I, it seems like uh, there's just a few people where normally there's lots. We were thinking we might have a technical snafu here, but I'm sure maybe maybe people's weeks have been like my week again, Jamie. But today <laughs> is hopefully, uh, yeah, just 12 people waiting, which is really weird, Brian. Normally there's like you know, a lot of people here and uh, we made a video to tell people we were doing it, but uh, Jamie said she thinks that it got unlisted, but even so there's usually more people, but, um, and actually we have talked about changing in the new year. We have ideas of how to get through. Hey, Hey, 39, I'm car. We have new ideas on how we're going to show up here on Fridays. Uh, we started to talk about it and begin to flesh it out so that on Fridays, instead of it being, we'll still do some questions and answers, but make it more like a coaching lab where someone, and I can talk about it today if anybody cares. Oh, the reminder says it starts at 11, Brian says. Oh, okay. And well. that must be John. We hired... Uh, does it say it in the text? That means everybody was here an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> waiting, waiting. Oh. oh, thank you for letting us know, Brian. We have a new um, team member, John, who's working with us doing like the new, um, the new thumbnails and new things that you see in the video. And I sent him the video and he must have put the wrong time because I think I say 12 p.m. in the video. Uh, hey, Truth or Darius from Cary, North Carolina, right around the corner. Oh, Hi, David. What's going on? David was waiting. Hi, David. What's happening? Hey, Victor. Small group. I love me a small group every once in a while. So that's <laughs> perfect considering everybody left an hour ago. Too. Uh, okay. So if anybody who is here has any questions or thoughts, hi, hi, Dino. Good evening, wherever you are, because it's noontime here. If anybody has anything that they would like addressed, throw it in the, uh, oh, you just got the video, Eric. Yeah. We're having a weird week, but that's okay. This it's, uh, it's the sum of basically sums up the month I'm having right now. That's okay. <laughs> hey, informative content. Uh, what's going on? Yeah. Thanks for joining us. I told Next Jamie that is my, going to be a better month. it really is. My poor father is in the hospital. They had to take him uh, by ambulance last night. He's 81, but I just, I, so if I get texts, I've been checking my texts because they've been coming in. Um, hopefully he's okay, but they sent him home and don't know what is wrong with him. So um, that's a bummer. So it's been, you know, just one of those. Um, okay. Dino's got top three uh, pieces of advice to stop porn. We can definitely start there. How to increase your libido. I, uh, I will definitely tell you that Umang, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry, but we can talk about balancing your libido. Um, I was talking to my dear husband in the bathroom this morning, probably to his dismay about, um, we were talking about how to recognize libido versus hypersexuality. That's why it's to his dismay because <laughs> he's trying to get ready for work. And we were talking about um, some interaction. So I will definitely talk about that. David says in the journey, still connecting the dots, does female beauty characteristics such as eyes, faces, smile, play a role that keep people hooked to the screen? It definitely can. Um, Marcel, why stop porn when we need to stop though? Yep. So why stop? And definitely, hey, best of the best, sir. Um, welcome. If you're new, uh, I was just saying that we're going to dig into some questions and answers. I'm going to keep the answers short. Where's the, uh, where's the post-it note I wrote for myself the other day, Jamie, reminding me not to wax and wane poetic. <laughs> just answer the damn question, Trish, right? Um, day 17, hit the private browsing button on my computer, but I thought about the shameful feeling it gives me, and I hit the X button. Paul, awesome. That is really awesome. Mark Dixon in the house. How's it going? Oh, thank you. Um, yep. Hopefully my father's okay. Do you have any thoughts on sex addiction, 12 step program, CSAT therapy, treatment centers, especially in conjunction? I have a lot of thoughts. So Jame, if you're okay, let's start with people's questions that are here, right? So Absolutely. that um, 
and we'll dig in and I will give you some nice succinct uh, question or answers to your cues. Let's get some quick and easy um, A's. Okay, so I'm going to go back up and just start with what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Welcome, Brian. Uh, I already welcomed you, but I'm glad you're in the program and you're on module eight. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so David, I'm going to start with your question. It's in front of me and um, and then I'll go back up to Dino's top three advice to stop porn. So this is a tricky question, David, and I know you're on this journey and you're doing a really beautiful job, but appreciating, you know, beautiful characteristics about a person. This is very individualized. So remember, this whole thing is patternized. There's patterns that everybody are is impacted by, but it's individualized. So this might be a point for you to dig in and create some more self-awareness. It the the key to figuring it out is are you seeing people as a whole person to connect with them as a connection in humanity? Not that you're looking at any particular aspects of a person to get a dopamine hit for you. Is it for you or is it for the connection between you? That becomes the, the definitive factor. And so it can be, you know, if you have healthy sexuality, looking at someone and saying, oh, they have pretty eyes, that's not filled with anything. Or, you know, noticing someone's beautiful isn't filled with the aspect of looking at someone sexually for a dopamine hit for mood regulation, because that is what you're trying to back out is using other people as objects for your pleasure. Dopamine's the pleasure seeking neurotransmitter, which means when you get it, it makes you want more of it to continue to seek pleasure. So um, that is a one way that you can Think about that. What's it doing to you? Because it could pull you back into the screen, especially if it's characteristics that people that you watched in the screen, you found appealing because it's for arousal. And I will stop there because that's a short and sweet answer, JV, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. Because no, I'm like, and one more thing and one more thing. And I was thinking about this. <laughs> I have literally been doing that for like 30 years. I have been a university professor for a long time. And even though I always have very high reviews as a professor, I would be the girl who's like, let's just push through the break. I know it's a three hour class. Who needs a break? Because there's so much more important information that you need. You don't need a break in this three hour class, you poor people. Now I look back and I'm like, oh, my God, those poor people probably need a break more than anything. OK, Dino, top three advice for stopping porn. So I'm going to do this off the top of my head. But, you know, it's based on what I talk about and getting into the way that I have created the program that we we offer. So number one thing you need to do in the short run is create a defensive plan. And I uh, recorded a podcast yesterday and it's awesome. It's coming out in two weeks. Uh, so we talked about this where we talked about setting up a defense and changing as many things as possible, but especially if you do it with some intention, you know, we know changing your mental and physical space. And what we were talking about is that your brain's on autopilot going back into the screen. So your first job is to turn your brain off of autopilot and grab the grab the wheel back and start controlling it yourself. And to do so, you want to be able to you know, change things. So you have to change your mental, physical, and especially categorical things. So triggers, if you know that, you know, boredom leads you there, then fill your life with things that are fulfilling. Don't sit around being bored. That's the, that's why I always tell at the end of these lives, I always say, figure out what you're going to do this weekend and plan it and make sure it's flexibly scheduled. So you're not just distracting yourself, but you're getting dopamine in a new way. So number one thing is figure out the changes you're going to make so that you can put up your defense, get a blocker if you need it. Covenant Eyes, we've talked about it, uses artificial intelligence. It's a really solid blocker. We have coupon codes for it. We have a link that um, is in Jamie can I don't know if you can find it and put it there quickly, but we have and a link. Trish for is the coupon code. If, if they go to, to uh, Covenant Eyes, you can use 
Trish. Okay, cool. Easy, easy enough, right? So you can use that coupon code and get a blocker. That's a defensive plan. Um, figure out what your triggers are. Going back to David's question, like if you know that it's always at nighttime in your bed, start chilling on your couch and then get in your bed to go to sleep and leave your phone out in a public place. So many people have to do that to be successful. Figure out the things you need to change. Don't kid yourself too. change the things that actually need to be changed, not the things that aren't going to affect the change for you. Then doing that is only going to get you so far. It's going to get you an inch in this mile long journey. What's going to get you the whole way is creating your offensive plan. Like I already started to talk about. So while you get your defense going, then you're thinking about, okay, what changes do I need to make in my life so that I don't feel the need to go into the screen to take the edge off of anxiety. So you figure out what the stressors are and you, you, I call them tolerations. You stop tolerating stuff. If things need to be fixed in your relationship, approach it and engage, start fixing your relationship. You hate your job, approach and learn how to create a new job. And it might not happen overnight, but this is part of the executive function project. If right now I was talking to a gentleman who works on a line, if you're here, uh, hopefully you won't mind me using our, this example, works on a line and, you know, he doesn't hate it, but he doesn't love it. And he's not using his brain at all, but he's trained as a plumber. But some of the pieces of plumbing he hasn't learned and it's difficult for him. So he can make a plan to transition out of line work into you know, mentoring with someone so he can learn the other pieces of plumbing so he can become a great plumber and use his brain in a in a healthy way and and purposeful way. And that's what we're talking about. You have to, those things take time though. That's why you need a defense while figuring out the pieces and you create identity. And you know, I I love what Paul said that on on a day where you feel like you want to go back in, if you have a plan to run, not walk away from that screen using the shame and the feeling, it's really, really cool for you to be able to do that. But you have to have a plan and you have to make changes. So that was two things. Um, I think the third thing is really shifting your framework. And we talked about this in the podcast too. And I talk about this all the time is shifting your mind from a scarcity to an abundance mindset. And that's probably the number one thing that I attribute to being able to stay in a good place, realizing, you know, your authentic self and what you inside want, and then being able to approach what you want to not out of like a need to get it because you feel like you lack it, but feeling so purposeful from the inside that that's the thing that you want to chase down. And, you know, that can really, really be very, very powerful in that framework shift. So those are three good ones. Um, James, do you have a thought? Well, in that, um, I get a lot of questions when um, people are recovering. Um, what are some signs, um, some early signs that you may be recovering from PID? Yeah, it was great. I had a conversation with someone yesterday and hopefully he's here because I'd love to reiterate it for him that, um, you know, he's really struggling and suffering and that is really tricky stuff. So, um, talking with him, I helped him to see some of those successes. So not objectifying people and being aroused by, he was talking about, you know, one certain type of highly arousing woman, and I won't, you know, dive into it in a triggery way, but that he had been consuming in pornography. That was the only way that he could become aroused. And so since he stopped, he hasn't watched porn in months, which is really cool, but he still is fantasizing about that type. So we talked about that, but a success is that he saw a regular, you know, person that was beautiful and became aroused. So he doesn't need that super hyper sensitivity to get to that point of arousal. And, you know, that was really powerful for him to recognize that he found that person attractive where he would not have a couple months ago because his brain was so conditioned to the type of person he was consuming on the screen. So that you know, before he couldn't have, have reached an erection because of that. And now he can. So that is PIED coming back online. And so when you're with a, a partner, you can see that and feel that much better, more easily, I guess. Um, yeah, for sure. So, you know, looking for your successes and, and another thing is like what Paul said, if before the minute you opened the browser, you were sucked in and now you can 
you can X out of it, that's a success. Celebrate that. High five yourself. Write it in your journal. And that uh, man that I was talking about, he's keeping a list of his successes in his phone so that when he feels like he's not getting anywhere in this thing, because the offense can take a long time to set up while while your brain's coming back online and rewiring itself. He can look at those successes and they're little. They, they're seemingly little until they start building. But when you're able to check those successes off or just, you know, your little goals that you make throughout the day that, you know, giving yourself that dopamine in, in a healthy way is is the, the for point. sure. David, um, I'm, David, I'm laughing at your comment. You missed the. You miss the small beat, the recording sound signal. I know that's the that's the beauty and the uh, bad part of when you level up. You know, it's no longer like me looking at the screen at the beginning and the end. <laughs> And, and Shelby, who used to work for me, she would never cut it off. And a couple of the videos, I'm like, Shelby, I'm like floundering around at the beginning of the video. You have to trim that thing. So hopefully John's <laughs> going to get them. And you're totally right. There is no fight club. I was telling my husband that the other day. He was counseling someone in the office, like, you know, giving him advice actually about porn. Um, and I'm like, dude, there's no fight club. You can't like mention, you, you can help him, but, you know, do it in the way where, you know, you don't talk about fight club. So funny. <laughs> So back to uh, uh, Umeng's um, question about how to increase your libido. Okay, so I would like to talk about how you balance your libido. And, and this is really, really tricky. It's so hard to, and you know, in the, in the podcast yesterday, uh, I think it always goes to, and men and women are different, but I was talking to Mark in the podcast and, you know, he was talking about men and and I'm like, healthy people can feel sexual for another person, not feel hypersexual just all the time. And, you know, thinking about sex all the time is a call for your brain that it needs dopamine. And I see Sean Pierre has a question, you know, how do you know if you're getting enough dopamine? And I'll incorporate that in here too, and talk about that in just a second. But, you know, it's, it is tricky to be able to, to discern it. So to be able to figure out like, is this just like actual libido? So in the video I made about porn sex and real sex being different, we know arousal takes time. So like, if you're just aroused all the time, that is not libido. People convince themselves they have a high libido and that they have a lot of tes testosterone. So if you feel that way, that's hypersexuality. Now, when you stop going into the screen and you feel nothing, you're in flatline. That's when you're like, how do I increase my libido? And the thing is, we talked about this in terms of a dopamine detox. Maybe you don't need to right now for a short amount of time because your brain can learn how to not be sexual all the time. And it can be difficult for people to like balance healthy sexuality versus unhealthy. So it might take you a little time to learn how to feel okay, not really being sexual, but then learning how to have healthy lust towards a partner or in search of a partner. And someone emailed me saying, you know, I go out and I check out a lot of girls and then I, I try to pick up girls. And sometimes I go home and have sex. Like that's not healthy for your brain because that's just your brain looking for sex for external validation. And, you know, what you want to do is validate from inside so you don't need that and you don't need the dopamine hits. And then when you get a partner, you can establish healthy lust. And actually, when we were, uh, my husband and I were buying a car, the, the man's a total weirdo, which I appreciate about him. But um, thankfully, he's yet again golfing. So I'm pretty confident he will not hear me say this <laughs> about him. And, and it's so funny, though, he did just he was doing home neurofeedback. I offer remote neurofeedback, which you can watch YouTube videos. It's like 5 a.m. and he gets off and he's like, I just watched one of your videos. I'm like, do not sit there and watch my videos <laughs> while I'm sitting next to you meditating in the morning, my man. Like that makes me uncomfortable. He's like, they're good. He's never seen them ever. Is that like mind blowing? <laughs> Anyways, back to the story. We're buying a car and he gives me, shoots me this dirty look. And, and I go, dude, like, and at the exact same time, the sales guy's going back and I go, dude, what's the dirty look for? And he goes, and you know, the, the, we didn't know the sales guy was like in earshot. He's like, that wasn't a dirty look. That was a dirty look. You know, he gives me that eye. <laughs> I'm like, dude, we're buying the car. But like, 
the point is like, you know, that that's between he and I, and it's cute. You know what I mean? And it, it's endearing. It's about connection with me. And it's not just him out there doing with all other people. That's how, you know, you're, you're building a healthy sexuality and libido for a person that you want to be with. Not that you're out there just trying to get dopamine hits from other people. And I'm going to segue into Sean Pierre's question. Like, how do you know if you're getting enough dopamine? Well, one way you can know, even if you're uh, somewhat of a pessimist, is that you can know by, in this case, in terms of healthy sexuality, that you're not thinking about sex all the time. You're now balancing your tools that you use to feel okay in this world. They're balanced in your toolbox. You're not always going, you know, for the hammer of sexuality. Sometimes you go there and you, sex is mood regulating. So if you're using it well, you're using it for connection and happiness too, and pleasure, which helps to regulate your mood. This was part of the conversation my husband and I were having where, you know, yeah, it does regulate your mood, but when you ease into it and you let arousal build and you're not just jonesing for it all the time, you know, that's the difference that we see. So when, when you have enough dopamine in your life, your life's balanced. So going back to how to, how do you balance your libido? So if you, in your toolbox, if you put tons of tools in there, your favorite hobby, your favorite people to hang out with, work that you enjoy, if you figure out what your stressors are and try to eliminate them to the least amount as possible, you'll start getting low levels of dopamine everywhere. And I know what you're thinking. And yes, it totally can happen. It totally can happen. And when you figure out the formula of how it happens for you, you protect that formula. And in our program, that's what it's about is establishing your particular formula, patternized, but individualized and sticking to that formula. And that's what I pride myself on trying to do, even though my formula breaks down. So when I tell you it's been a week, half the reason is I'm my own worst enemy. I'm Sorry, I got somebody buzzing the tower here. I'm I'm working too much. I'm overextending myself. Things got busy and I didn't take something else off, off the plate. But then I protect the formula. I get it going again so that I, I work out. I get dopamine. I have lovely meals with my friends. I get dopamine. I'm going to hang out with the besties tonight, which whenever we hang out, it's laughter and dancing. No, I'm not a very good dancer, but... <laughs> Uh, we, you know, we hang out and we chill and that just fills the cup back up on a Friday night. And then doing the, all those things that you love and connecting with people and it's work, relationships, hobbies. And when your toolbox has lots of different things in there, you will, you can feel at peace. And I think like we don't give peace and joy enough credit. And that's what happiness is. Happiness isn't pleasure. Happiness is You've got enough dopamine, but you're not looking for it. It's like when you can stop looking for it all the time. And, uh, you know, we were talking about that in the podcast yesterday, too, is that he calls it. I'm forgetting how to say Mark's last name. How do you say it? Kep it. Is that how you yeah, say Mark's last I name? Jamie? So. <clears throat> From uni so. Universal Man. Uh, Quep it. Quepit. Yeah, I knew that it was wrong and I wasn't coming up with Mark Quepit. Yeah, really nice guy. We had a great conversation from Universal Man yesterday. But, you know, he was saying that, you know, he, and this is what happens to so many people, that he trapped himself in his own prison of pleasure. It's like when you're always looking for that pleasure, you don't have enough dopamine because you're, or you have, you're getting too much of it all the time is the reality. So it's balancing it back into the middle where you're not looking for it always. Um. I was listening to a podcast um, and it was with the same concept as about, you know, you getting dopamine and getting that that high, but there's always a low that comes with that. So mm -hmm. you either stay away from it so you don't get that low mm -hmm. or, you know, just know that if you're going to get that high, that low is coming. So, you know, it's it's how to balance that. And um it was really, really insightful and exactly what you, you say. And I always think about this now, whenever you talk about totally. that. Movie. And, and, and Mark uh, framed it differently too, in a cool way. I love when I hear people talk about what I think about, but in a different way where he was talking about kind of like pleasure being encapsulated in the box of pain, because like you get the pleasure for a short amount of time and you get the pain for all the rest of the time, which is so true. And so you know you have the perfect amount of dopamine when you can sit on your couch and just chill 
and you can feel your energy every morning when I do my meditation, which I do every morning, I start by feeling my energy and I can feel it. I can feel I'm in a good place and I'll be like, oh, cool. My energy's in a cool place. I can feel when it's running hot and then I'll be like, mm, I'm running hot. What am I going to change in my formula? What's off? How do I get back to the formula that keeps it in a good place? And if it's dragging, you know, either you're running hot, you're running slow, you're running perfect in the middle. When I'm running slow, I usually know because it's I didn't get enough sleep or, you know, something broke down there. And I know those days. But most of the days it's like, OK, my energy's in a good place. And shop here. One more thing about being a pessimist. Pessimism can be shifted. So part of my porn brain rewire program is positive psychology, which comes out of University of Pennsylvania, having a framework shift, shift towards optimism. And I had to, to create that shift in myself 30 years ago. And it required some hard choices, not being around people who made me feel pessimistic, changing my schedule. So I stayed optimistic. And so now it's pragmatic optimism. You, you hear me talk like, you know, I don't think everything's all roses and sunshine. It's not toxic op optimism. Like some people call it when you're just so optimistic, even though, you know, you're in a sinking ship, mine's pragmatic optimism where it's like, okay, my ship is sinking, but what are the factors that I can control and let's get to work on it. Let's, you know, get the lifeboat and start blowing it up type of thing. And so you can shift your framework by practicing. And again, you know, part of my program and part of what I'm here to do for you all is to take these concepts and make them into action steps. That's the coaching piece here. So, so practicing optimism. And so anytime, if you say you're a person who's pessimistic, when something pessimistic comes out of your mouth or something pessimistic, pessimistic shoots through your brain, Write them down. I have people in coaching write those things down if they can't explore them in the moment. And then later on, on paper, shift them into a positive. And, you know, you hear me when the way I do it is you get the opportunity to figure this thing out. So, you know, some things hit the fan this week for me where made it a busier week than usual. And John, our new team member, he he texted me. He's like, sorry, you're probably so stressed out about this. I'm like, honestly, I'm not. I just see it as an opportunity to fix this. Yes, it's more work. And yes, I'm up late working, but, uh, you know, not I'm not stressed out about it. I'm just feeling it out here and figuring it out. So I'm going to go back up to Mark Dixon's question. Uh, do mm -hmm. you have any thoughts on sex addiction, 12 step programs, CSAT therapy and any treatment, especially in conjunction conjunction with your own program? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So 12-step um, programs are great. I think they're excellent. There's a couple things I don't like about them, and I'm going to tell you them, but I think they're a really good place that people can stay for a long time because they are affordable, because they're free. But the part that's lacking is that I don't like the fact that you have to label yourself as whatever thing you are there for, for an eternity, and I know that that label can serve some people. So if you go to Sex Addicts Anonymous, you know, the first part of any 12 step group that's organized in that fashion is to say, you know, I'm a sex addict and I'm powerless to it. And that reason is so that you can give your power over to a higher power to help you, which I like. But at the same time, like, I don't think you're powerless in this. I think you have to realize that. It has power over you. And I think people can get their own power back, which is why I say control your brain or it will control you. If you are addicted to something and you're using something compulsively, you can get the power back, but you have to tap in to your authentic self, which I believe is a spiritual experience and comes from, from your own, you know, innate power that you're given from your higher power. So I, I like the fact that it has 12 steps for you to move through, to move through move you through your traumas, help you resolve them within yourself and with other people, help you to stay aware of your patterns. Um, I think they're really good. Uh, Marcel, you're funny. I'm addicted to you. That's funny. I'm addicted to helping people probably, <laughs> but in a, a hopefully healthy way. Um, 
So I think they have shortcomings because I don't like people having to, I've never liked diagnoses actually back when I started in, in my master's program, one, my master's program project was looking at reports when they had diagnoses versus looking at strengths in areas of actually then it was areas of weakness. I don't even think they're areas of weakness. I think it's areas that need to be worked on and looking at how those diagnostic terms serve people and they don't, they don't serve people over time. What does serve people is going, okay, here's an area for me to work on. Here's the tools for me to work on it. If I get to work, I'm going to be able to move through this thing. So I do like the fact that it gives people a process to move through. When it comes to CSATs, CSAT is a certified sex addiction therapist. Um, it falls out of the, the umbrella and schooling of Patrick Carnes and his daughter who lead that. I think it's great, but I do also think it has some shortcomings to a certain extent. It doesn't look at uh, the neurological component of it. So I think uh, you know, a lot of what's in my program comes from the structure of CSAT, but adding to it that neurobiological component. Um, so I think it has a lot of good pieces to it and definitely in conjunction. And I was just talking about this to a colleague, you know, you can do multiple things to address this. The more you do, the better. So, you know, having that support. So just to let everybody know, David, thank you for your um, donation. We are grateful. Your question, I am not able to go back up and see. Um, so if you can ask it again, I can only go up so much. I don't know if you can see it, Dr. Lee, but. Um, um, I think that was actually where he put the donation. I don't know if the question was in a different place, was saying that, uh, you know, how my videos have leveled up. Okay. Um, so if, if I don't get mm. to a question, it may be because I'm not able to save anymore. So I apologize for that. Yeah. Um, and da David, I love what you say here too, that another thing is I always keep myself as a student and you know what, David, me and you are like, and someone put on my, and, and you know, going back to me being addicted to you all, like I'm here because I want to help people. I'm not here for dopamine hits or of course I like my work. So I get dopamine, but my ego isn't here because I want, praise. I think this is the number one problem the world has. And I don't try not to, I don't mean to uh, approach this out of arrogance or anything like that. I consider myself a master student, you know, and because I have learned so much, I want to share it with other people. And I always keep myself in the student ver in the student version of myself. And I think you can be a master and a student at the same time where you're mastering what you learn over yourself. And then we know when you share that with other people, when the student becomes the teacher, that's when you have internalized what you're working on. And so I love that. I think that's really cool. So I've got a question. Um, how can I make the determination? I feel like I am not serious with anything in my life. Yeah. And unfortunately, it, it depends. If you keep going back to the screen, it will be very difficult for you to get serious about things in your life. And so I know when I see, you know, in a lot of the videos, you need to leave porn behind. And they're like, oh, wow, genius brain tip step, Dr. Trish. It's like, because a lot of these things can't be done until you get some time and distance away from the screen. The screen's literally distorting your reality and it's impairing your brain function. So if you keep going back into the screen, it's sucking the life out of your frontal lobe where planning and organization, that's what executive function is. Your ability to tap in and feel what you actually like and want to do. And then to make a plan, a long-term plan around it, you've trained your brain to go back to the screen over and over and over. And when you do that, you're training it that it gets a quick reward with no work, no thinking. All you got to do is hit the easy button, easy button, reward. And when you go into the world, it doesn't work like that. What happens is you have to sit with yourself and go, what do I want to do? And that takes brain power to do it. And you need the brain power to be able to do it. And then your frontal lobe lights up and it's like, you know what you care about? You care about tennis. So you should go learn how to play tennis and, and become a tennis instructor. But if your brain is all jumbled up from going back to the screen, you can't get to that place. Then you definitely can't get to the place where you're motivated enough to 
you know, sign up for classes and follow through on a long term plan that has a lot of work associated with it and a little reward because your brain's been been taught no work, big reward. So part of what we're doing here is teaching your brain. I'm not going to a quick reward anymore. What I am going to do is unwire that pattern and I'm going to start making small steps towards a bigger goal that unfolds over time. And when you do that each and every day, you teach your brain that it has to do some work. And then over time, your brain learns, I get dopamine from this work. I get lower levels, perfect levels of dopamine to be able to keep moving forward on this project. And then you build momentum and you see and you celebrate those small wins. You know, even one thing I do is if you decide you want to play tennis, get a tennis racket. When I do coaching with people, I'm like, I'll talk to you next week get a tennis racket. And then inevitably what happens is we get back on a week later, or sometimes it's a month later. And, you know, some guys will go, I just ordered my tennis racket last night. <laughs> I'm like, I know. So like, you know, and you need time and distance from the screen and then you can start popping. And, you know, that's the idea of sexual transmutation going back to Napoleon Hill, where you're taking that energy as it builds up and you're not offloading it into the screen. You're conserving it for yourself to use well. And, and this was part of the discussion the hubs and I were having this morning where it was actually a very short discussion. But, you know, the idea was like you can take all this energy and instead of thinking you're a person walking around with all this libido, you're a powerful person who can channel that into what you want to create in your life, but you have to be able to move away from the screen. Um, I've seen a couple of questions about um, nutrition, um, you know, and uh, what was the other question? Medication mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and supplements. So if we yes, can, so, know we've and we're working on that. On that. We're working on, uh, I'm working hard just so you know, because supplements are very important to me as a, a lifestyle. I take a lot of them. Um, my husband is an expert in this area, but um, we're trying to get a link so that we can send people a link for whole food supplements that don't break the bank. And that's what's really important to me. We use a line called Standard Process, and you can only get that through a, a practitioner through someone who is a doctor. So um, I'm trying to get a link so that we can provide a link so that you can just purchase whatever you want from that link. Um, because a lot of other supplements uh, can be very, very expensive. But whole food supplements are different in that in standard process, what they do, it's an organic farm and it does use animal parts. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, it most of them won't be for you, but they do have an herbal um, supplement line. And so basically what you're doing when you supplement is, you're putting into your system what is lacking. And that's a healthy way to use supplements. And we know now without going on and on about it, that even if you eat organic food, your nutrition isn't, I actually create a whole PowerPoint slide. Nutrition doesn't have the same minerals and vitamins that it did 30 years ago, even 30 years ago, like, you know, our soils worse, our water's worse. So even organic farming, you know, it's difficult. So when you put these supplements in, you're giving your body and your brain what it needs. So that's step number one, but then you can go further. And if you struggle with anxiety, you can put in some supplements that helps you to offset that anxiety. There's serotonin precursor supplements that can just help you feel better and more joyful. Um, and I can tell you um, two lines that I have used before. And we, we also, because I'm certified through the Amen Clinic, we can offer discounts for Brain MD, which is the Amen Clinic line, but they are quite expensive, I will tell you. And, and I think they're okay. They're good. I like standard process better. And I, in the program, in my 90 day program, there's a supplement list of the exact supplements that you would need. Um, and honestly, I don't remember them or I'd probably uh, give a little ditty. My husband put that together with the rep from Standard Process. So I made sure that I had expert minds on it and not me just doing it myself. Um, but and if anybody think. is interested in that list, you can email me. I'm putting the email address in the chat. Um, so, yeah, supplements can be really, really helpful. So in the diet, I mean, obviously eating healthy is is better. Um, is, is there anything that like salt, does that increase? 
You know, yeah, so the- totally like and anytime you eat anything with preservatives, it increases neurotoxicity. So like an easy thing is don't eat anything in a crinkly bag. And and I have only I've been cleansing again this week and which means I'm completely starving right now <laughs> because <laughs> I am only eating cruciferous vegetables, which means, you know, basically very green, crunchy vegetables. Think salad, very lean protein. So if you're not a vegetarian or vegan, chicken is the leanest, you know, white protein that's out there. An easy thing in terms of nutrition and supplements is eat more protein than carbs and make sure they're complex carbs, not simple carbs. So what that means is like we we took our family out to dinner last night because it was my stepson's 30th birthday. Like, I can't believe he's 30 years old. I said to my husband, at least like, uh, at least I'm the stepmom and I love him. You know, we have a great relationship. At least I'm the stepmom and I don't have a 30 year old, you know, and he's like, no, my husband. <laughs> so and my husband's only five years older than me. So it's not like he's a million years older than me, but um, we took the kids out to dinner and my husband's like, what are you getting? Salmon and okra again. I'm like, yep, I'll be getting some more salmon and it was broccolini, but you know, it's like salmon is protein broccoli is the carbs that's complex carbs and i actually didn't even get any other carbs with it so you know brown rice is a healthy carb uh gluten-free pasta is healthy but anything that is bleached white flour is not good for you it creates inflammation in the system and you want to stay away from inflammation uh so okay. i have a question that is not on here um okay. it's talking about hypersexuality versus level of dopamine does mm-hmm. dopamine um fluctuation, um, function, it's function slash blood, the brain because of orgasms. I was just thinking of the fact of how when a person has sex with a partner in a normal way, does the brain understand the orgasm and react with the dopamine in a different way when the orgasm is the result of sex with a partner and when is the result of self stimulating? Yeah, for sure. Because there's a lot more stimulation, especially if it it involves going into the screen or an image, you know, if it involves and we know an image is one thing, but videos is another. And then fantasy is a little bit lower than, you know, going into the screen for videos. It's so when you go into porn, it's a super normal stimulus. It alone is dumping tons more dopamine into your brain. So that's why people will have porn induced erectile dysfunction when they're trying to be with a partner, because the level of stimulation when you're with your partner is here. And when it involves pornography and masturbation is a lot more stimulation than you can get with a partner. Usually if you're having healthy sex, that doesn't go on for eons. Right? So, When that happens, your brain's getting lower levels of arousal and stimulation, healthy levels. You know, again, it's like uh, when I talk to Noah Church, when his podcast is out on my podcast stream, which you can, it's on all podcasts and their videos here on YouTube. But he talked about, you know, going from candy to apples. You can't eat candy all the time. It makes you sick. So that's the level of stimulation. It's candy level stimulation when it's physical stimulation for masturbation and mental and visual brain stimulations off the charts when the more things you do, that's why edging so dangerous. So then what happens is when you transition to apples, Like if you eat a candy bar and then you eat an apple, the apple doesn't even taste that sweet. But if you've been cleansing and all you've had is salmon and broccolini for five days and you have an apple, apples are really sweet. So that's the idea is that you have to train your brain to now remember that actual sex is very sweet. But then you only give your brain this level of stimulation, not hyper stimulation. And so then. It's a mix of serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. There's other neurochemicals, but those are the three primary ones when you actually have sex with someone you care about. <laughs> we, we probably need to talk about that at length at a different time. But, you know, if you're with someone you care about, there's connection. Oxytocin is the neurochemical of connection, which is super important because if you're masturbating to porn, you've connected yourself to a screen seriously through oxytocin. And so then if you Then the others are serotonin for happiness. There's very low levels because we know going back to the screen and masturbation creates shame. So the happiness neurochemical is lower and the dopamine is higher. But when you're with someone, you're happy to be with someone as long as it's someone you like. 
So you're getting serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin, and they're mixed together instead of high levels of dopamine. That's the transition that the brain needs to make. It needs to go from dopamine seeking. And remember, dopamine's pleasure seeking. It's a motivational neurotransmitter that basically keeps you wanting more and seeking more pleasure, which isn't healthy for you. Um, someone asks, uh, can we get help if you're not in the U.S.? We help anybody all over the world. So you do not have to be um, in the U.S. Yeah, we work um, with people all over the world and it's really fun. So fun for everybody to interact with each other. And what I was going to say is that um, in the 90 day program, there is a group and the group is offered at different times across different weeks across the month. And so it's de developed so that anybody around the entire world can at least make one of those usually two meetings. And so when we get on, we have people from, uh, you know, just in, in Mondays, just thinking, I know there's someone from Germany, someone from Peru, someone from Puerto Rico. Um, I, there's people from India, uh, you know, there's people all over the world, Australia. And which program would you prefer for young people is one of the questions. Is there it's there. It's not designed for young or old. It's designed for magnitude of what you have going on. And it's designed for how much you can put your resources into this and how much you need to. And so the reason we have programs uh, going back to I'm trying to find who's heckling me to give people love for free. <laughs> it is who is it? Marcel, I want to say you can find it for me. We're here doing this for free. So this is, you know, free support. It's yeah, Marcel, uh, you know, this is free support. And then if you need more support, there's a $49 program, which is a great start. It's 10 lessons with 10 action steps. So like if that feels big enough for you now, it's we we change the name to fundamental so that people can really understand. It's a fundamental program of the key pieces that you need to investigate and explore. And you do it by yourself. And it's 50. It's forty nine dollars. So it's a great price. And a lot of people who join it, that some of them can only join that. They don't need anything else. And people will email us all the time. Thank you for that program. It helped me out. I'm done. I'm moving on. Life's good. But that's because the magnitude of their problem was here, not here. So then what happens is there's a coupon, coupon code in every program that if you want to start small and move big, you can. And you get your investment back. So you get that $49 back and you can... You can apply it to a bigger program. The medium program is, I would say for most people, start small and then you can transfer big if you want to. If you know you have issues that really you you need to do all the work and start at the beginning, the middle and the end, that's what's in the 90 day program. It's developed 89 lessons over 90 days with action steps. And then you can add the group to that if you want my support and the support of other people so that you can move through. You can stay in that program forever. So it's designed that if you can achieve it in 90 days, it's there for you. If not, if you need it for a really long time, it's there for you. I'm there for you. The other people are there for you. And it's a beautiful thing. So that's a great program. And most times it's either small or big. Some people do join the middle one and it's 30 day program. And so then this way you can start moving and that's, you know, it's a middle price point. The big program's $899, $899. And I know it's an investment, but at the same time, that investment in yourself pays back in dividends. You know, I've been buying programs like that. At, even when I was younger and $899 was a stretch for me, I would buy programs like that and I'd finance them. I still pay for programs like that because I can't get to the next level unless I'm like David. I'm the student who's willing to learn from someone and invest in myself in a program I can have forever. So, you know, that's the reality of that. And then I always update. I've been offering programs for a long time. I always update the programs. Usually every three years they need to be updated. Sometimes a little, I will add some stuff earlier. You get the update too. You always get the update. So you'll be a hundred years old and you'll be getting an update from me. <laughs> Joseph, I'm glad you're here, my friend. Uh, how do I stop failing? I'm just going to jump to Joseph because I know you were looking for the link to get here. So I'm super psyched to see you because I asked Jamie to make sure people could find this. Um, how do you stop failing? There's no such thing as failure. There's only win or learn. And yes, that's pessimism being shifted to optimism, but it's totally true is that, if you quote unquote fail, take the time to look at what happened 
Look at it, open your eyes to it instead of avoiding it. Get a magnifying glass out and go, what triggered me back? What did I allow myself to do? And going to somebody else's question I saw, um, you know, I keep going on, I'll find the person. I keep going on social media and I, it baits, Emily Gonzalez baits me back in. I watch a lot of Instagram photos, baiting myself, and then you get sucked back in. Don't go there then. If you, you have to gain the fortitude and the strength that, that you can say to yourself. And again, like I said before, don't trick yourself. Don't kid yourself. Say to yourself, why am I going to Instagram? You're going there to be triggered. Get rid of anything triggered. If you're going to go to Instagram, ditch everything that you know is going to pull you back in. You have to stop kidding yourself in this journey and, and say to, to yourself, I'm not going there because I'm just going to end up going backwards. And, uh, you know, I'm already I'm already moving forward. Why would I want to trick myself into going backwards? And it's the hijacker. He's trying to get you to to go to those places. He's, he wants to tell you it's OK. No problem. You're, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Um, so I got another question. Why, when I was younger, porn didn't seem to affect me? Mm -hmm. Because addiction escalates. That is the essence. Or affect of, me physically. Excuse me. I, I missed that it, part. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. So, like, you know, all addictions escalate over time because of tolerance levels being built and your brain needing more of the chemicals that you are giving it at higher levels more often. And in the way I always talk about it is, you know, when you started, your brain had to recalibrate itself and it's like, whoa, that was awesome. But now I have to adjust myself. And every time you go back, your brain's trying to get itself back to homeostasis. Homeostasis is the healthy level when you were young. But every time you go into the screen, you're tipping that homeostasis and you're creating neo homeostasis, new, it's new balance, basically, you know, and so your new balance is there for a little while and then you need more as you need more it is Im impacting you and that's why i i make these videos i want people to know if you're young and you keep going back even though it's not impacting you now there's no way it can't show up in a worse way for you in the future because of escalation so then what happens is when you're frying out your brain when you go back you're creating less activity in the frontal lobe Thinking, organization, memory, impulse control, judgment, all of that's tanking over time. If you keep going back to the screen, you're frying the reward center and that's going to show up physically for you. You're going to start feeling junky. You're going to have porn induced erectile dysfunction. And it goes back to what Jamie said. Talk about the student becoming the master, right, Jay? <laughs> Where <laughs> Jamie said that. When you go into the screen, the A effect is you get all this dopamine. Then when you go into your life, you're actually just getting cortisol. You've trained your brain. There's no dopamine there. It actually goes lower. And the B effect is that you feel worse all the time unless you're in the screen. And when you start having general malaise or if you start being angry and irritable, you don't associate it with porn, which is what I want people to know. Porn is creating it. If you feel like you have ADHD as an adult, porn's probably bringing that on because there's porn-induced ADD and ADHD because your frontal lobe's being knocked out. If you have erectile dysfunction issues, if you're not motivated and you're consuming porn, it is a factor. And so when you go to a professional and you go, uh, I have anxiety and depression and I don't feel well, I can't get motivated and you don't tell them about porn or if they don't know about porn, going back to Mark Dixon's question or somebody else's question. Yeah, Mark's about the CSAT. CSAT, excuse There's me. somebody else who also is about, uh, is there a reason behind brain fog and I'm unable to concentrate, focus during addiction? Uh, mm -hmm. Does it have to do with having neurotransmitters clogged up in inks? No, it has to do with the changes in the electrical energy pattern in your brain, and then the cascade of how the neurotransmitters are used. So, you know, you've probably heard me say before that it's a dis-ease, it's disease. We know that compulsive hypersexual behavior disorder, which is what this is all called, which it's in ICD-11, it's been considered a disorder, a disease, dis-ease in the nervous system, it goes back to that calibration has been thrown off. So there's disease in the in the system, which the disease 
creates the symptoms. Oh, I lost my place. I'm just reading through here. Let's see what we got. Hey, Scott Smith, I'll get some shout outs. Thank you. Thanks for um, joining us here on the channel. Hopefully I'm able to help you. Let's see, 30 day, 36 day streak for Obelix Co. Very cool. Um, relapsing four days ago. Learn from it, my friend. Get back on the streak. Three days strong. Change something. Figure out what, what led you to the, that relapse. Don't just go back in without thinking about it. Think about it. Uh, uh, hi, Nishan. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, what advice will I give a person who is in college and wants success? Number one, stop going back to the screen. Number two, heal your brain so that you can you can use the brain training headband. I plan on making some real cool videos now that John's working with us so that I can really show you how it works and why it works. If you can afford it, get one because every day you'll be pulling your brain in a healthy, organic, non-invasive way back into the healthy pattern. And if you want success, as long as you want to be in college and you're there for a thing that you want, which that, again, is a conversation for a different day, you know, follow your heart and your mind. Go after what you want. And, you know, that goes back to my story of 10 years ago, I applied to medical school because my father, I'm sure this is one of those deep seated patterns that you don't even know is there. My father always put medical doctors on a pedestal. And even though I had two PhDs and I had three other college degrees and five children, by the way, six, but with Connor, but you know, I took the couple of prerequisites. And when I say couple, it was organic chemistry, one and two physics. One and two. It wasn't like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it wasn't like a couple easy ones. And I got into medical school. And when I got in, guess what happened? I'm like, I don't want to go to medical school. This is literally going to destroy me, destroy my beautiful children. Talk about traumatizing them, destroy my relationship with the hubs. We hadn't made a whole plan, but I was going to have to move away and we were going to have to see each other. And I'm like this, Thankfully, I came to the point where I'm like, this is ludicrous. I'm ch I'm chasing this thing down. It's not even my goal. It's the goal to try to get, you know, somebody else to uh, appreciate my, all my efforts. And then I wrote the letter and I called. I will not be coming. Talk about empowering. So as long as you're in college for what you want and you're doing the thing that you want, you'll rock it out. But you have to leave the screen behind. Hi, Mike Adams in the house. What's going on? Oh, you had a not good um, experience with SA. Um, all or nothing thinking. And you're right. Without the neurobiological component, you're just spinning your wheels. And I just recorded a video on like taking a slow boat to China. Uh, I'm creating a partners program with Adria, who is going to be the champion of that cause for partners. But it's all like minded thinking of what I have going here but just helping partners. And I was talking about that, taking a slow boat to China with, you know, spinning your wheels and keeping yourself in a place of frustration and suffering and struggling needlessly. And when you have the right components, then you can move through and yeah, it's still challenging, but you know, like we talk about and like I'm encouraging you here as an action step, find out how you're being successful and start cataloging your successes. Because if you're putting the pieces, neuro is the brain piece. Bio is figuring out what's happening in your physiology, figuring out how trauma and dysfunction. And that also leads into psycho and social. Psycho is your psychological state and what you can control. Positive psychology and optimism would be one way to think about that. And then social thinking about, and actually this is something I wanted to share before we jump off, thinking about your social group because emotional maturity and growing up your emotional maturity is pivotal in this journey. You have to become a different version of yourself. And I was thinking about emotional maturity, thinking about my family of origin with my dad not being well, um, that when you grow your emotional maturity, you no longer resonate with some people whose emotional maturity is lower. So when you grow up, you don't vibe with them anymore. And I work with a lot of young people, thankfully some really cool young dudes who are like, you know, it's weird because it's hard for me to interact with my friends anymore because they're checking girls out. They're just trying to have sex randomly with people and that's not working for me anymore. So when you grow up, that's the social piece. When you grow up, 
your emotional maturity, you have to find people at the next emotional maturity level that can pull you forward. You know, that's why they say you're a sum of the three people that you spend the most time with and, you know, choose those people wisely. So they're encouraging you in the right direction and you're encouraging them. But that's not to say you don't have fun, because I was thinking that people are right in the comments like that. I'm a curmudgeon that I don't have any fun and you can be emotionally mature and deal with difficult things in your life and keep moving towards solution. But then you can crank some tunes up or, you know, have a ton of fun with your friends and family and be goofy. You can tap into that inner child in there and get back to, you know, being fun. It doesn't mean you're dead serious all the time. It means you can do the hard stuff and you can find a place of peace and happiness. Um, I know we are. Yep, I, gonna, talk. I, I just yep. looked down and wow. <laughs> I know it's crazy how time flies. So did we get to yep. mostly some good stuff here today? And thank you for everybody jumping on. I know there might've been some confusion, but it seems like we've got most people. Uh, let's see what we've got. Ireland, you're right. I am from Ireland. I'm a recovering Catholic. Makanu. <laughs> uh, because let's see what we got going here. That doesn't mean I don't like Catholics. It means I'm trying to do things that don't provide any shame and taking the shame out of it and keeping the spiritual spirituality in it. Um, 1.5 days. I will jackhammer you. We talked about you have to change your, your avatar, my friend. It'll be good for your brain. Uh, there you go. Mike got him 10 months clean, my friend. Beautiful thing. Beautiful awesome. thing. Um, okay. We're going to wrap up. So listen, make a plan for this weekend. Make a plan that keeps you in. I don't have an Irish accent, Mustafa. You're right. Uh, but make a plan for this weekend that keeps you in a good place, that keeps you balanced, flexibly schedule your life. And like I talked about last week, don't, don't, flounder this weekend. Don't go on social media if it's a trigger for you. Or if you're going to, go on to delete anything triggering out of it. Make a plan. Jamie, you have any fun plans for the weekend? I am. Um, we've got a large vigil that we do <clears throat> every year for um, people that um, have, have been murdered in Durham and my mother was murdered three years ago. So it's a, it's a large celebration and um, you know, a lot of people come out and it's just, you know, recognizing, you know, just the, the bad things that happen and just kind of lifting other families up. So it's really a, a nice thing to be able to attend. So we're excited to, to go to that. Yeah, well, uh, that's amazing. And that's a huge trauma. Thank you for sharing that with people here because I know it's difficult. I had uh, thoughts of me sharing some of my family trauma today, but we didn't get there. And, uh, you know, Jamie, again, is an inspiration to me, too, by being able to take that and to reframe it into a celebration. And I know how tricky that is. And advocacy, I think, is really helpful. We know this. You know, that's something else you can take from the 12-step groups when you advocate to help other people in the same situation and to help next generations not, not do that, uh, you know, not be impacted and hopefully change what's happening. So uh, stay in peace when you do that because you know how I feel about that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, what about you? I... I'm doing lighter things than that, Jane. <laughs> uh, I am hanging with the besties tonight, which is always fun. Um, two of my friends moved to Puerto Rico and they moved back. So the besties is always consisted of six people because our two friends moved away and then we met another couple. So it's always bed at six. And so now there's eight of us. And it's funny because my husband renamed the group chat in our phone. Eight is enough. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just hanging with them all the eight of us so that's cool and then um going to the horse farm tomorrow with my daughter and i'm taking sunday off man i've tried to really just make this a um more chill weekend so everybody yeah, do, do the same nothing. balance relax i know seriously um okay so everybody have a great weekend and next week we don't have a live because it's our week our, it's our creative week and it's our reorganized so um, no, and no Q and A next week in two weeks. And just so now there's more people on, we're going to keep doing the Q's and A's, but 
We're going to focus on one coaching strategy and do deep dives into a strategy. So we'll let you know what we're going to do so that we can start doing a coaching lab. And if anybody has any thoughts on, you know, something that isn't just an answer to a question, I know one person asked me, how do you forgive? And, and, you know, speaking about what Jamie's talking about, that might be a good place to start because forgiveness is what unlocks our brain from trauma so that we can move forward. So um, doing a little bit of a coaching lab. Yep. It's Eastern time zone. So not next week, but the week after at 12 PM. And we will make sure that that announcement is correct. And we will be here. We'll get questions answered and we'll do a deep dive into a coaching topic. Um, and we'll, we'll go there. No, Jamie's not single. Jamie has, <laughs> Jamie has a man. We're here to help you find your version of your partner, not with us, but through us. Right. So, okay. Have an awesome weekend and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.